Well, thank you, Peter. And they do say that flattery gets you uh, everywhere, but uh, it was a, an easy uh, ask to respond to. And thank you for that introduction. Uh, it is really an honor to be here today, and we do applaud the work that's being done by uh, Mass and, and LBP and IPAC, of course. And I think the vision and leadership that's being shown in kicking off this process. Canada's 150th does represent a uh, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, or for some of us, maybe a twice-in-a-lifetime opportunity, to really redefine ourselves as a nation and, and shape our shared destiny, not just for ourselves, but I think also for our children and for their children, too. And I think the process that we're embarking on today, imagining the possibilities that we can create both as and for Canadians, is a very critical first step. I'd like to use my time here today to talk about the business of nation building. And I do mean this in both a literal and figurative sense, uh, as Canada is a very enterprising country in every sense of the descriptor. And Canadian businesses are partners in building and shaping our country, and I think that's uh, very evident even in what the expectations are of Canadians, as we just saw in the Enviro Environic Survey. So when you look at the business of nation building, I believe that you have to look at the legacies of Canada's business past, what Canada's businesses and business people are doing today, and what our businesses can, can help Canada go in the future. So stepping into the past, literally, Canada was born of an enterprise, and all of us in this room likely know that almost half of our country was in fact company territory up until the years just after Confederation because much of our land was the Hudson's Bay Company. And as time passed, the competition for resources and the protection from American invasion initially spurred some of the most dramatic national infrastructure projects in our history, uh, such as the Canadian Pacific Railway. Well, among uh, a lot of business books that uh, line the shelves of uh, my office at Royal Bank is one that's called Quick to the Frontier, and it's a history of RBC published back in 1994 to celebrate Royal Bank's 125th anniversary. And as you flip through the pages of that book, you can't help but see how the company and the country have really grown up together. Because industry and enterprise have intersected at the heart of Canadian history. Great national projects, great public works, built our nation and our nation's businesses. And they did transform Canada from wilderness into a modern industrial economy. How we do business and what kinds of business get done has changed dramatically. Our time today really doesn't allow me to do justice to the enormous legacies of Canada's business past, so I'll simply encourage you to remember that the intertwined histories of national and business achievements have positioned Canada very well for the future. The business of nation building today, I believe, consists of at least three pillars. The first is to build on and celebrate our legacy of business success. Americans, I would say, are experts at this, but our Canadian business endeavors, great and small, are reshaping the nation, and the world uh, and us should be celebrating this. From developing the latest technologies to creating a financial sector that's the envy of the world to helping throw the ultimate global party in Vancouver, Canadian businesses are partners in innovation, creation, and that should be a source of pride and achievement for all of us. Today, major projects in this country are undertaken in a spirit of partnership. It's hard to think of any substantial initiative that isn't a true public-private partnership. And it's this sense of collaboration that will continue to drive our country forward. Beyond making a profit for their shareholders and owners, businesses also invest in the social and cultural fabric of this country. Businesses at an organizational level are strong financial contributors to the vitality of our land through our country's many institutions, programs, and events. And I'm very proud of that, we, all that we do at RBC. Canadian businesses are, of course, preoccupied with uh, their prime uh, 
objective, delivering shareholder value, but not exclusively so. And that really brings me to the second pillar of how Canadian businesses are involved in the business of nation building. Our business community plays an important role by providing innovative thinking about Canada and its future path. Here's what I mean. Uh, back when the idea for this conference was first conceived, and Peter pointed out that individual citizens drove the run-up to Canada's centennial in 1967, he also noted that Canadian businesses took an active interest in the discussions and the planning. And in fact, Peter went to great lengths to highlight that banks, yes, banks, even specifically my bank, were a very integral part of the discussions. And Peter did reference a client letter written by the Royal Bank of, Cal of Canada to illustrate his point. So I'd like to thank Peter for doing that. But I'd also like to quote from another Royal Bank document. And it said, It's a pity that we worry so greatly about our diversity because it is just this diversity that gives Canada individuality. Out of manifold talents and different ways of looking at things come originality, strength, and a forward-moving spirit. Out of our heritage have come our basic freedoms, our democratic way of life, our art, our literature, and music." End quote. Well, this passage came from the Royal Bank letter in 1966. 1966. Evidence that Canadian business has been thinking about issues such as diversity for more than 40 years. In fact, in 1967, the Royal Bank published a book called A Conspectus of Canada that contained essays about everything from Canada's Aboriginal peoples, Canada's place on the world stage, and Arctic sovereignty. Today, businesses are thought leaders on critical issues such as the environment, water stewardship being a particular preoccupation of my organization, immigration, diversity, and the new Canadian reality, Canadian competitiveness, the structure of Canada's social programs, the new global financial order, and the renewal of the public sector. The list can go on. In short, there's probably not one single topic of critical importance to Canada where Canadian businesses aren't involved. We're partners in thinking about the potential of our amazing nation, and it's because we have a stake there. I encourage you to learn about the nation-building ideas circulating in the business community that can be articulated in the years leading up to 2017 and that will shape our country's life at 150 years and beyond. There is an extraordinary wealth of knowledge, know-how and spirit housed in Canada's businesses and business people. We've tapped this very well in the past and it's my hope that we'll make the most of this in the years leading to and through Canada's sesquicentennial. I believe that the business of modern day nation building has a vital grassroots component and that's what I consider to be the third pillar of nation building. Canadian employees, the bedrock of Canadian business, be they employees of large organizations or Canada's entrepreneurs. These millions of Canadians are the source of government revenue through their taxes and they support businesses when they work at home or at their place of office and also as consumers but they also give billions of unpaid hours of their time as volunteers in their communities on top of often having a full-time job. And many of these Canadians are supported in their volunteer initiatives by their employers who recognize that an employee who gives back to their community is not only a happier employer, employ, worker, but they're also contributing to the creation of a strong and confident Canada. And that's just good for business. Well, if ever we needed an example of Canadians' pride and contributions, the Olympic torch relay gave it to us. And I think that um, Nicole spoke so well about that. In order to be selected, uh, just a little background for you, as a torch bearer um, for RBC, we provided about 4,500 of the 12,000 torch bearer spots. We asked Canadians to tell us how would they create a better Canada. Well, we received thousands and thousands and thousands of entries, each one telling us the story of an individual Canadian contributing to Canada. They were amazing to read. And this is nation building at its finest, when citizens can contribute directly to the betterment of their country. 
Canada, Canada's businesses are global entities in ways unimaginable even a few short decades ago. We do fly our flag proudly around the world. I imagine many of you, like me, um, have seen it. I love being at the heart of Europe and, and see a Bombardier train or tram ferrying people about. I love being in Asia and seeing business people thumb along on their Blackberries. And I really love seeing our RBC Lion in places like our head office in the Caribbean Bank uh, down in Trinidad. Nation-building activities abroad used to be the exclusive purview of the Foreign Service. Canadian businesses are now and will continue to be partners in bringing Canada to the world. So let's think about what we want to bring to the world. This is a chance to think big. This is a chance to think global. This is a chance to bring the best of Canada to the world. And I challenge all Canadian businesses to think of the ways to build on their best and deliver it to the rest of the world. Canada's businesses have a lasting legacy. We have amazing people, we are forward thinking, we believe in the spirit of partnership, and we love the businesses of building Canada. We at the Royal Bank of Canada stand, stand proudly under the maple leaf and are ready to continue to help build our nation together. Thank you.